Good morning again to everyone. Uh, I would like to present to introduce Sandra. Uh, Sandra uh, Rodriguez is working in our uh, department, uh, physical chemistry department, and is uh, going to talk about conduct cancer simulation in single molecule device. When you want, you can start. Thank you so much for the introduction, Pilar. So um, hi to everyone. Today I would like to share with all of you one part of my main research in the last year and in the topic of single molecular conductance or in conductance in single molecular junction and why molecules. As you know that the properties of the molecule uh, change a lot when we value or change the electronic properties of this system. So we can modulate these properties, and this is the idea that Avilan and Ragnar proposed when they show or create this model of molecule that uh, is, was a theoretical model and proposed that can act as diet. So allowing uh, the preferential current flow in one direction in function of the bias polarization applied to the to the molecule. So uh, in addition to the electronic transport in this kind of system, where the molecules are able to perform all the basic functionalities in, in the electronics, uh, in the electronic devices, uh, taking advantage of the inner properties at the nanoscale, so we can design a new concept of okay, different concepts or new concept of devices with no classical analogs. And we can explore, for example, uh, the fact of to manipulate the electronic spin or the device can show a quantum meter. But uh, to exploit the property of this molecule, is mandatory to connect to electrodes through certain uh, and coding group. So this connection modifies the electronic property of the molecule, and thus we have to consider all these changes in the electronic structure of the molecule to design a device with the desired properties of functionality. We think the changes that we have to consider the first one is when we brought a molecule close to, for example, a metallic substrate, the molecular level, a chapter, and we modify the relative alignment, alignment of this molecular level with respect to the Fermi level of the, the metal. So we are uh, changing, modifying the injection barrier of hole and electron in the, in the device, in the deposition. We have to consider also the, the electronic coupling, the interface the electronic coupling between the molecular orbital of the, of the molecular orbital with the continuum state of the metal or, or the electron. So in function of the strength of this electronic coupling, we obtain different broadening of this discrete molecular level and the shift of both with respect to the Fermi level in a more or less a continuum state also to the to the level of the molecule. And the last effect is the Coulomb interaction between the hole and the electron associated with the, with the ionization or affinity of all molecule with the substrate. This substrate, the metallic substrate, creates a screening effect that is commonly called a uh, imaging chair effect. Uh, this effect also shifts the promoter a chip of the molecular level with respect to the Fermi level of the, of the electrode. And for that change, the property, the final property and functionality of all the uh, device. That's not change. Well, one example of the later was clearly shown in this study that I performed before I joined to this university, 
Here we wanted to show us the modification in the electron structure of one molecular wire, in this case by the introduction of different substituents in the central ring, that modulate the energy of the HOMO level uh, around 0.6 EV in isolated state. When we introduce a word first, we uh, create the deposition of this molecule in a uh, cold surface, or then when we introduce the molecule inside of the junction, we observe that the HOMO level for the three systems in the monolayer, in the deposited monolayer, and in the case of the junction, practically were at the same energy level. I remember a different, more or less, of 0.1 EV. So uh, the dashed line corresponds to a high covariance of molecule in the junction, and the continuous line, when we have a big cell, unit cell, and we are approximated to the a single to a single molecule junction. Okay. So in both cases, uh, the same value of the HOMO level practically uh, is traduced in the same uh, transport property of the three system. The differences come from the fact that the polarization that we apply to the junction shifts the electronic density of the molecule in function of the polarization and the, uh, the degree of covering. But we are, need, we are losing the first uh, modification of the electronic structure when we design the, the molecule. Okay, so all these things we have to consider when we want to design a uh, single uh, device with a uh, exact functionality or exact property. So for this reason, we have to consider the nature of the electrode that can be metallic or non-metallic, or as in this case, in this example, you have an electrode with copper electrode covered with a layer of graphene. And then the top electron is an even electron composed with other different uh, elements. Then the nature of the molecule is very important. The type of uncoupling group that I use, because uh, depending that I use one or another one, I'm promoting a higher or lower degradation of the molecule with the electrode. And then also the linking position. Okay, there are uh, molecules designing with the idea that have in backbone linker and we can uh, measure the conductor to different conductor pump along the, the molecule. So in according with the element scale of this kind of conductor, usually between one and three nanometer, the electron transport it operates in the ballistic coherent regime. So for the calculation of the electronic transport or the conductor, <laughs> we make use the combination of the green function technique and the Landauer formalis expressed in a local non-orthogonal basis. Uh, the Landauer beauty uh, formalis uh, help to treat the transport, the electron transport as a transmission probability problem. So the electrode acts as electron deposit, ideal electron deposit in equilibrium, and the central region is formed by the molecule and several leads of the mm, metal that form the electron, for example. And we have the scattering region. It is called a scattering region and can be viewed as a tunneling potential barrier. And it's basically to apply the tunneling. Uh, the tunneling effect to, to the problem. So the transmission coefficient finally for an incident wave is the, the ratio of the transmission the transmitted to the incoming or the incident probability forces. Okay, so finally the total transmission will be the addition of the individual transmission for each 
propagating mode, available propagating mode. And the final conductance will be proportional to the quantum conductance in the proportion uh, coming from the total transmission. So when, when we have all transmission function or spectrum, we can extract a by, uh, very valuable information, both qualitative and quantitative. First, we can know the exact alignment of the molecular level with respect to the Fermi level of the device. So we have an estimation of the injection barrier for electron and hole. In this case, for example, the conductance is dominated for the homo level of the molecule because it's in resonance with the Fermi level of the device. Uh, the value of conductance. If we are working in the linear regime at low temperature, according with the Landauer approach, we can read directly the value of the conductance for the transmission, the value of the transmission coefficient at the Fermi level. So with this approximation, we are extract the value of conductance. And then uh, qualitatively, we have to, to know more or less the, the interfacial electronic coupling with the bandwidth of each band. So in this case, for example, in the LUMO, the LUMO level of the molecule, uh, the coupling will be very low because it's very, very small the, the bandwidth. And in the case of the OMO, we have a wider, uh, a wider band. Other thing that we can extract from that kind of spectra is the, the electronic delocalization. This is the electronic delocalization in all molecules that is given for the intensity of its signal. Well, knowing all of that in mind and considering that the non equilibrium green function VFT approach that we use to simulate this kind of spectra. Uh, usually, okay, usually no, DFT over, uh, underestimate the gap of the system. And for that reason, we obtain a simulation with conductor overestimate uh, in comparison with the experimental result. So for this reason, and in addition, uh, doesn't account for the effect of chart imaging effect. So both effect modify the gap and thus the value, the final value of conduction. For this reason, at the code that we employ to simulate this, uh, this spectrum, doesn't account for uh, use the FT non equilibrium function, we implemented the self-energy correction to the code. Transiesta code. So the first part corresponds to a term that corrects the homo lumo gap. So basically, we move the homo to the ionization potential value of the system and the lumo to the electron affinity. And we are opening the gap. Then we account for the main shape effect. We consider the, the Coulomb interaction between the distribution of charge of homo and lumo with all the imaging chain generated in an infinite reflection, considering the screening effect of the electron. So this part of the correction decreased the gap and totally the effect of both are going to open the initial gap. So with this uh, implementation, we wanted to, to test it. And for this reason, we apply to this group series of as a, uh, a zinc derivative from benzene to pentazine using two different anchoring group and position it in the same uh, in the same ring in all cases. Okay, so for that we computed the transmission function with fault correction and with correction for both series of of system. The main uh, difference is that the conductance when we apply the correction is reducing by more one order of magnitude with respect to the use of the, the GFT non equilibrium function without correction. The second important thing is that 
the trends that we obtain without applying the, the correction is basically the same for the two groups of models. But when we apply the, the correction, uh, this uh, trend is not clear. For one case, basically, I don't know if you see the green points up here, it's difficult, but basically for one series, uh, the conduction is the same, and for the rest, the trend change a bit with respect to the other aspects. So it's important to apply this kind of correction to obtain a good agreement with the experiment. For this reason, we compare our results with the experimentally values available and theoretical values available in the bibliography only for four systems, but in all of cases, we obtain a good agreement of our values, the black points, with the, uh, with the experimental and theoretical values that are published for this system. So, with all of this, uh, the first uh, study that I performed be clear in the Autonoma de Madrid was related to these components. We wanted to know exactly what is the effect of boron nitrogen substitution in derivative of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon or molecule model of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. For this reason, we designed this kind of molecule derivative of one, one for a saborine that fulfilled the requirement that we wanted, that the heteroatom, boron and nitrogen, was embedded in the P-conjugation system, and in addition, that was in the conductant band. In the way that we can evaluate exactly the effect of this substitution in the conductants. Well, uh, these were the four components that were designed, were synthesized, but uh, unfortunately, the all carbon pentacin derivative was very unstable and uh, was not possible to realize to, to did any kind of analysis on it. On it. So finally, we consider the three components, these three components, all carbon and tracine, Doped antracin derivative and doped pentacin derivative. So then the next step was the measurement of the single molecular conductance corresponding to these components. And that was well done using a scanning time microscope and the technique of Baird junction. This technique is based in a pool. pool, pool Push pull effect that we in this case we were working with and we were working with gold uh, electrodes and the tip also was of, of gold. So the tip, the gold tip is indented to the gold substrate. And during the pulling process, we are separating the tip from the substrate, and the conductance is decreased with the distance. If in this process a molecule is cut, and bridge the two electrodes, we observe a plateau in our mesh. So thousands of these measurements are done for one system and then are plotted in this kind of graph, 1D histogram and two dimensional histogram. From there, we can extract the most probable value of conductance for the compound that we are studying. And we also have an estimation of the um, the length is strength. That means the conductance part. So usually if the molecule is fully stretched between the junction because it is occurred by the last occurring group, we have an estimation that the value of the of the conductance part is basically the same at the distance between a point group. So knowing that in this case was the case so we perform a simulation of the transmission function considering the three system pool stretching between two electrons. So uh, at the beginning or well, at the beginning of the simulation, we found that in addition to the substitution, the final phenyl ring 
uh, the final phenyl ring uh, change the lateral angle with respect to the central core. So I'm simulating the effect of both the doping effect and the conformational effect in, in, the, in this system. So for this reason, I simulate the transmission function not only for the full relaxing molecule in the junction, but I simulate, it's not shown within the transparent, but I also simulate the transmission function when I restricted the torsional angle in the doping system to the same value that I obtained for the all carbon molecule. We did have to know exactly what is the effect of the substitution and what is the effect of the conformational change in the in the doping. So okay, and the last went to the form or the shape of this transmission, the conductance for occurs for a non-resonant channeling process. And here I compare the values of the conductance experimentally obtaining with the simulated theoretical simulated. Uh, when I relaxed the, the junction and when I restricted the diagonal angle of, of our system. So we obtain the same trend that experimentally uh, this kind of doping, this kind of doping reduced the conductance of the system. More or less in the same, but we obtain value of conductance more or less in the same order of magnitude. And I compare the theoretical result without and with constriction to the to the relaxation. And we realize that the 50% of the change in conductance in this reduction of conductance is due to the angle variation, and that's the 50%, right? The rest of the, the, the chain due to the doping effect, the substitution. Uh, this kind of substitution also modifies the, uh, the aromaticity of this system. So we wanted to know how aromaticity, what is the effect of the aromaticity with the with the with change with the changes in the conductance that we, we saw. So for re this reason, I compute the nucleus independent chemical chip index that usually is used in most cases for um, give an estimation of the aromaticity degree. I did that for each one of the central fused ring. In the two cases, when is the molecule fully relaxing and when is constraining the the diagonal angle, and for both cases, in both cases we obtain the same result. The central, if we focus in the central ring through the conductance take place mainly, we obtain a High reduction of the aromaticity of the ring when we go to the old carbon system to the doped analog. And a slight decrease when we increase the conjugation of the central acid in the molecule. So this reduction, this reduction in aromaticity is related with the reduction in conductance that we obtain. Okay. So basically, a loss of aromaticity promote a reduction of the conductance in the system. And now I wanted to show you the, the study that I'm working on now. I think it's very interesting because uh, both molecules, these both molecules share this central proaromatic group that confer the radical character to uh, molecules. So there isn't any, any kind of study of this type of system, either theoretical or experimental. And we started to calculate the, um, <coughs> the open shell character of both systems. I calculate a value of zero for the, I'm going to, to call this one asymmetric and the other one for symmetric for for simplicity. So for the asymmetric molecule, we obtain uh, uh, the radical character of zero. That means that in the, the most stable state in the electronic ground state is the closure singlet. But for the other, we obtain a value of 0.767. Sorry. 
uh, you have to take in mind that a value of one corresponds to a pure open shell uh, structure. So for this reason, this molecule is a D radical. That means that in the ground state, we have a mixture of the open and open shell and closed shell structure. So that's open. Ah, okay, sorry. We have that more or less in the in the ground state. But in addition, I calculate the energy of the lowest lying triplet close to this uh, open shell singlet and is at only 1.10 kilocalories per mole. That means that with an external stimulus, we are able to switch between the singlet and the triplet state and we can create a magnetic switch. So we can take advantage for the properties of the open shell singlet and by an external stimulus, change to triplet state and obtain a different property or different conductance in all case. Well, so experimentalists have registered the measure, the conductance in the same way that in the previous study. And for the asymmetric compound, they obtain that value, okay? And value of conductance. Finally, we are working with tendencies, okay? And for the D radical molecule, they obtain after the clustering analysis that realized two values. The higher value of conductance and a lower value of conductance. So the first hypothesis that we are thinking on is that if you see the spin distribution in this kind of molecule, the first hypothesis was that the higher value of conductor coming from a shorter conductance band. That means that one electrode anchor for the anchoring group and the other to the spin density of the molecule. That means that the spin density acts as a back in backbone linker. And the lower value of conductor will be. Uh, we assign it to the conductor through all the molecules. So when the molecule is fully stretched in the stretch in the in the junction. So for that reason, I perform the simulation of the transmission function for the single closed shell state in the case of the asymmetric molecule. But for the symmetric system, I perform the transmission calculation for the single closed shell, single open shell, and triple state. When the molecule is anchored or arrangement in between the junction in the two configurations, from the end to end and from the end to one central position. Um, one of the transmission is missing because it's already calculating and correspond to the single closure for the symmetric molecule when it's arranged from the end to end. Well, I know that you don't see anything there, so I separate the graph comparing the asymmetric, the transmission for the asymmetric molecule with the transmission for the symmetric system in the singlet open shell and triplet state when it's full stretch, when it's extended in the junction, and in the other case, when it's uncorked for the central part. So, uh, if we compare theoretical result for all the cases of the symmetry of the D radical molecule, we obtain a higher value of conductance than for the non-radical one. But if you see the result from the experimentalist, at least it's an hypothesis until now, the value of the non D radical molecule is in between the, the both value for the, the radical system. So in any case, we obtain that result. All of results for the, the radical molecule are conduct, value conductance higher than the uh, asymmetric system. So we are, yeah, me. we are thinking on it because it's something that we don't know what is happening here. So I wanted to show you because I think it's a 
new kind of study in this field. And if you have some idea that what is happening here, I will be open to all the su suggestions. And OK, to finish, I want to thank all of you for being here today. First, second, the collaborators that make possible this kind of study, the computational resources that are very, very important, the financial support, for sure. And I think it's all for my part. Now you have some questions or some suggestions. Thank you very much, Sandra, for the nice talk. Uh, now it's time for questions. Any questions? Thank you, Sandra, very, very interesting. I was so wondering, you mentioned that uh, you use a uh, graphene layer on top of the copper electrode. Uh, I mean, probably I missed that point, but uh, why is the graphene layer used? What is the role? Okay, that was an example for one study only, but that showed you the different configuration of the junction. It's not my job. But usually, when you use a layer of graphene uh, on top of a metallic electrode, is to get the couple the molecule from the state of the metal. So it's a way to um, keep the um, isolate the state of the molecule inside the junction. So perturb the less possible the electronic structure of the molecule when are inserted in the in the junction. Is that graphene dope somehow or no? Usually. And it's thrown directly on the copper. I can suppose that because there are a lot of study and measure, experimental measure. And of course, okay, we have a close example, but it's not the same. And also in India, nanofilms here in the autonoma, that they use a graphene layer on a ruthenium substrate. But in this case, they generate a more pattern, different of the graphene on the ruthenium, on ruthenium. But how is possible is like, there are people that are working on it. So. so question may be a little bit silly, but uh, I want to know how the, the how did you, um, so how do you calculate the image of the, of the charge? Because usually when it's a point or the charge is localized, you can assume that the same density is on the other side. But what if the orbital is delocalized and you have some kind of diffusion? Oh, well, we, we take the, the charge distribution in the OMO for one part and the charge distribution in the LUMO for the other part. And then we calculate the potential with the imaging charge generated at, okay, I fix uh, the position as a mirror. And it's in the same distribution as the other side. And it's the same, but we consider the infinite reflection of this interaction, this charge at both times. And what, uh, what? So, my question was really if you take the, the, the exact distributions on the other side or. or it's, uh, it's the same with this, the opposite side, but we do are moving in far from the, from the molecule. Okay change the, the value of the charge because are far from the we use as okay no me salido completamente sí a ver a ver a ver esto está aquí okay. we consider I don't they don't see what the this the picture you have here the molecule uh -huh. and you consider the reflection or the interaction with the imaging chart in this part. And then these charges are considered to be reflected with this part. It's like you have here two mirrors. If you put between two mirrors, you see your, your body. Infinite is the same. Okay, so it's the same issue. But okay, you know that is. Uh, finally, you are uh, calculating a potential. Mm -hmm. So the potential is each 
time lower because the charter are mm, charter, the no, and the idea is to get the the, the that the potential on the surface will be zero. So the, on the on the on the reflective surface, so the potential of the two charges will be zero. That is in the molecule. But we apply like the correction. Uh, okay, if we consider the charge distribution in the of the homo, we apply the same shift to all the occupied state in the young shift. And with the distribution of the charge in the lumo, is applied to shift all the uh, unoccupied state. Thanks. Welcome. Any question? Only how do you really know or are you sure that you are anchoring technology in the pipes you want to run? Okay, I start from a structure that's okay, from an initial structure uh, and form the molecule for the point that I want. Okay, then I, I left the molecule and several layers of gold to, to relax freely and also the length of the natural. I allow the electrode and move it in the same direction of the, of the transmission. So finally, I obtain the optimal journey. Yeah. Well, okay, you can synthesize the molecule, design the molecule, or in this case, for example. We wanted that the both heteroatom was in the conductant pan. So we put the alcoholic glue in this position. It's there to be more, for example, in other position of the molecule. So the alcoholic glue helped to encode the molecule for this part. Although, as you see in the in the last example, that we, we are not sure about that, but maybe the, the linking occurred through, through another part of the molecule. But theoretically, I, I can't put them on you where I want. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so. <laughs> Next. Any question? Uh, I have one. Ah, oh, sorry. No, no. You first. Uh, maybe I, I miss it, but uh, in the last part of your talk, the radical operation configuration, with your calculation, did you distinguish uh, the or estimate the conference? Uh, or the uh, thing that goes with the configuration. I mean, kind of, okay. Uh, which, which one is the, the best in terms of? Thing. No, it's I mean, I partially understood you have like a, a equilibrium, thermal equilibrium of single temperature, but the be radical. I was wondering if with your simulations you can tell which of the two configurations are um, more decent for productive? Yeah, the, uh, okay. In the in the last in the last table, the higher value basically are obtaining for the triplet state. When the molecule has a weakness of the trans the conductance through all the molecule. It's the higher value. So I think that in okay. This kind of calculation are, are more time demanding because when you consider open open shell structure, I have I have to impose this pin polarization to the calculation. Sorry, uh, lower values there means high value. Yeah, it's in lower yeah. scale. Any more question? Well, I have a very, very simple question because uh, more than the other theoretical calculation, I was uh, thinking about uh, is similar question. Um, when you do uh, experimental uh, in, in the lab to put the, uh, one molecule in between two electrodes, um, are you uh, working with that or just take some uh, experimental data from the uh, bibliography and just uh, more theoretical with that because yeah. well for me it's very difficult to understand how can you put one molecule in between two uh electrons so i didn't perform the experiment so the two the two examples show that they at the end 
the measurements are coming from people from Indrea and from Universidad de Granada. But as I know, so they put the uh, put the T close or basically push the T with the substrate and then start to separate. And they see how the current if a wire of gold or one atom of gold is created, they saw how the current decreased with the distance. But instead, with, with they cut, they don't see it. It's, of, but you don't see how or how the molecule is cut or if there is a molecule. So they saw a plateau. So in the decrease, they saw a plateau in the in the conductor, a value of conductor more or less. Okay, maybe with one a bit tight tighter, but and they know that there is a molecule in between of, of the electron. How know what is this conductant path with the length of the plateau? They relate the length of this plateau more or less with the distance between the electrode and how is the molecule? Is the end to end connected or is connected? From the end to another point of the money. So it's not this one because it's not macroscopic, no, no, yeah. but sure. It's difficult for this reason. Uh, from my theoretical point of view, it's also difficult sometimes because I don't know what is happening. I have to mod to create different models to try to understand what is happening in this experiment. Okay. Thank you very much, Um. Okay.